half hour and guess what we have a very special guest with us and we're very lucky because he's gonna stay with us for at least 20 minutes and it's Chris Robinson from the for at least 20 minutes oh, so hello. lucky that uh, I have <laughs> no, 20 minutes I well you know I would stay longer you know but I have to get on an airplane and Oh yeah, you're a rock and roll star. Have you're my busy. baggage rummage <laughs> through the friendly customs agents. Actually, I did run into an immigration person here today, and I had to take back all the horrible things I've said about customs officials in the past because it was the most pleasant sort of conversation and like, oh okay, yeah, have a good time in Canada. Oh all right, that <laughs> you know, was it, was a, it was really wild. That's rare, but does it happen that people recognize you at the border and they're cooler or worse? <laughs> Yeah, usually, yeah, usually they, um, usually they don't really see you for as someone who makes music and sort of is just trying to find his own sort of rhythm to get along best in these days. They just look at you and say, "Freak, strip search him, cavity, body cavity search." Oh, no, thank you, officer. Uh, <laughs> and I guess if I knew you any better, I might search your cavities too. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I guess there's nothing you can't do about about that. Mm -hmm. You know, except maybe uh, join the Republican Party at home. <laughs> I don't really, I've never got an invitation, so I don't think they want me. Oh, well, you would be great there, you know. Oh, they would they love me over changes. there. Yeah, I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> they really want to hear it from me. Something is, uh, is that. You'd have to greet everyone. Hello, fascist bourgeois scum. <laughs> Your new album Elitist is, Bastards, how are you? Your new album is out. It's called The Southern Harmony and Musical Companion. And uh, it's, about, it's a great title. Yeah, it's about uh, growing up in Montreal, being French Canadian. <laughs> Get it? No. Very it's, interesting. Uh, it's from another country, you know, down the down the road a piece called the South, you know, where we grew up. I, I don't think the record's about that. But. No, but that's why you called it this way, sort of uh, Well, yeah, there's a bunch of it's funny to us, you know, the irony of it all. It holds a lot of double meanings, like most things these days, you know? Most words. So we thought the title would, that's sort of our way. Shake Your Money Maker was sort of tongue in cheek, and I don't think anybody ever sort of caught the joke there. <laughs> Some people did. Yeah, like as far as the title goes. Uh, you know what? Um, I was going to ask you, did you find it difficult after a huge success with Check Your Money Maker to come out with your second album? Did you feel a lot of pressure? Or was it, oh wow, you know, it worked so well. Let's, let's do the next one. Well, I mean, I, I can't say that being in the Black Crows means that things are pressure free. You know, I don't think that really comes to mind as far as the way we work, but I can say that um, pressures from the recording industry and those things, they don't exist to us, you know? I mean, it's the game and everyone plays it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I have to play by the same standards and rules and etiquette that the other ones play by. For the sheer fact that they're not playing, you know what I'm saying? No one's playing by the rules, you know? You start with the government, you know? So, I mean, it's odd that by us not playing the rules means that we tell the truth. And it's such a weird thing, you would think there were other sort of dimensions and angles into that. But um, the truth really, you know, like they say, it hurts and everyone who deals with it knows that. But that's sort of the point, to deal with your demons and those sort of uglier parts first, you know. Get them out of the way and then you can move along to the sort of nicer and more sort of light-hearted parts of the afternoon. This is what, uh, you know, on this album I find, I feel you deal, you've dealt with a lot of well, demons and other things too, but a lot of, of demons, don't you find? Well, I mean, the it's... lyrics and... Yeah, it's sort of hard for me to describe them and to like, when it runs by the table, put my hand on its tail and while it's trying to get away, say, oh my God, man, that's a chicken coop or whatever, you know? I know that, I know that it's just a reflection. It's just an expression of our, the way, where we are, our lifestyles, being in our, you know, I'm 25 now. And everyone's sort of still in their early 20s, mid 20s. And sort of, this is our mirrored sort of, of our lifestyle, you know? It's our representation, you know? And we just call them songs. For some reason, we take one and put it out and play it, and hopefully people like it, you know? If they don't, then maybe they'll like the next one. But I think the different sort of levels and things that are going on within this record and the different moods it can take you, that's... or from at least what people who've had the record for a little bit of time. This record really is not like a lot of things. It's, it's for 
when you're by yourself in your house and you're sad and it's for when you have all your friends over and it's to you know take off your clothes and stand in front of the window <laughs> and listen to it really loud and watch the traffic drive by if it's I about could. being alone and about not being isolated you know so it's yin yang sort of thing it's very abstract and I haven't really helped anyone out with what it is at all I know but but it's still kick ass though <laughs> well, I can I use hope the so. expression yeah right? and and I hope people dig it and it's a good record uh, yeah all I think it grows so. on you you know like some very few records are like that the more you listen to them the more it does something to you well you I know I mean that's the only thing we've ever tried not to be is formula you know we've never wanted to be formula we've never wanted to be disposable I never really wanted to be chart success really doesn't mean anything to me it's nice and if you write music that's popular and people like it that's cool you know but I mean to be honest I don't have anything against you know these people but if I'm on you know, they bring me up and say, you, Mariah Carey and MC Hammer, you know, like, what am I going to I don't think they live in my neighborhood, and I don't know if I'd have anything in the refrigerator they'd want. You know? <laughs> maybe beer, maybe not. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, it's, it's yeah. we're still very in an awkward place trying to deal with so many aspects of the Black Crows cause so much violent reaction with even the industry because we don't do things the same way and we're still trying to deal with that we're still you know the megalomania of it all but you keep they your want integrity. you to yeah you know they want you to do it like this you know and you got to have bigger more spectacular explosions and you got to have a piece on the side you can prop your elbow on and you know it's like well we are going to make some music about what we are and we're going to give it and we're going to go on the road and play it even after a huge success you're still well that's what i'm saying i mean success what is it you know yeah. i mean if i can have a you know i'm not going to make a, enough money to be that elite to be one of those people that doesn't have to deal with anything you know and i and what does that mean does that mean i chase this Ponce de Leon fountain of youth you know and when i'm 16 i just I mean, when I'm like 50, I want all the 16-year-old girls to have to go change their panties after the show, you know? I mean, that's all cool, and I guess when if I'm still playing music when I'm 35 or whatever, you know? But I can't, you know, I can't bend and be uncomfortable and try to race. It's not a competition. It's... It's art, right. Yeah. I mean, but it is rock and roll, so when you say the word art, you have to use it, and it's old, broad, oh, yeah. general sort of thing, because it's such an immediate art. Rock and roll make it really good. Rock and roll really is so immediate and so desperate sometimes that it's very often imitated and manipulated, much like all religions, governments, the media. So, uh, but you know, it's really not up to me to say, well, this is the real thing, and I am this and that. You know, I mean, everyone has their thing. You know, everyone has their oasis. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their euphorias and everybody has their sort of woes. I'm sure uh, there's today. a lot of people who would like to ask you questions today and uh, fortunately we uh, decided to open as the phone As long as none lines. of them are about rack and pinion steering, <laughs> I think we'll be all right. <laughs> okay, you can call us in a few minutes. Uh, the toll-free number to call at Much Music Studio and talk with Chris Robinson from the Black Crows is 1-800-265-6824. 1-800-265-6824. He's going to answer your questions. And maybe if that doesn't work, you can just have me in a big see-through box and people can just come up and, <laughs> and knock on the ball. Poke at him. Look at him. <laughs> Let's watch Dallas again from the first album and we'll be right this back with Chris Robinson. This Okay. <laughs> we'll watch if you changed. <laughs> Went through puberty. <laughs> take me away from all of this and, and then, whatever you need okay but there are some people wanting to uh, ask you some questions now we have Shane from Stewart BC uh, hi Shane hello how Shane hey Chris how's it going huh? Shane okay you're coming in just from out of the air it's like yeah, you know, you're right a in supreme being here. or something man <laughs> it, what would you like to ask Chris okay um, well I want to ask Chris um, how do you feel the, the transition between the first album and the new one is like musically and emotionally and spiritually what's the difference between the first one and the new one well uh, it's sort of um it's sort of hard to concisely wrap it up you know i mean it's it's the difference between sort of a puppy dog that's cute and chasing his tail and like a rabid sort of rottweiler chained to a fence and you walk by and he jumps out you know? <laughs> i don't know you know i mean it's the same 
to me in some respects because we've never changed what we do, you know? I mean, I've, mm -hmm. I've never looked at Rich and said, hey, let's get in a band and let's write songs, you know? He just came over one day and had a piece of music and he said, hey, man, check this out. And I so said, he just went with the flow. Yeah, you know, so it's the basically the same thing. Mark Ford, our new guitar player, adds another dimension. Eddie Harsh, our keyboard player, a Toronto native. <laughs> um, it's a much tighter unit, you know. We, we were on the road for... Um, well, we did 350 shows on the last tour, and it's more militant, and it's a little more aggressive, and it's sort of about, in a way, without alienating anyone, keeping sort of the straight people out, and sort of keeping the people who know how music sort of can affect them in, you know? It's about those people, you know? I can't bend over backwards to reach people who don't want rock and roll music, you know, so it's for people who really love rock and roll music, I think. Thank you, Shane. Now we have Cam from Calgary. Uh, hello. Oh, Cam is going to be there in a second, sorry. Hello. Oh, hello. Do you have a question for Chris? Yeah, I wanted to ask Chris, um, being from uh, the South down there, there's so many musical styles and influences. What was it that uh, influenced you and, and the music of the Black Crows? Oh, wow, man. I don't think they have enough time in the day to start getting to that. I mean, there's just too much music, you know? And I mean, there's, there's more than music, too. I mean, Barbarella was an influence, I'm sure, in a weird way. You know, Napoleon, Don Quixote, you know, Muddy Waters. I don't know. There's so much stuff. Jack Kerouac, James Dean. I mean, there's so many things, you know, that can bring to mind any sort of images or senses, you know, so yeah. I think it's more of um, a question of what doesn't sort of influence us, you know, <laughs> what, we don't choose to really keep blinders on, you know, we like to sort of get in there and get dirty. So <laughs> a little know, bit of it, everything. <laughs> with everything we can grab hold of. Thank you, Cam. Le Bye. Bye. Uh, Leanne from Toronto is standing by. And is, is, are you there yet, Leanne? She's there in a second. She's there in a second, okay. Um, She's just putting the groceries down and coming back <laughs> over to the phone. Oh, wait a minute. Chris Robinson's on the phone. Hi, Leanne. Hi. Uh, would you like to speak with Chris? Yeah, I was just wondering um, when you're going to go on concert, go on tour next, and when you're coming to Toronto to the Toronto show. Uh, well, I, the tour is going to start, well, actually, it starts in a couple weeks in Japan and Australia and New Zealand. So, unless you. Uh, have a prescription for sleeping pills and want to take that flight. I, you know, I, it's going to be called High as the Moon Tour, mm -hmm. and um, I haven't seen a Canadian date. I know it starts in July though in North America. So. Okay, thanks a lot. All right. Thanks, Leanne. <laughs> Thank uh, Alex is standing by. In the meantime, I wanted to ask you, your show is going to be really special this time. You were talking about a special moon to be created or something. Well, is that? I mean, with. What I, what I you know really would like to have at a Black Crows gig, and I think it's things that happen at Black Crows gigs, is that so many times people second guess us and think that we're out to hurt ourselves or hurt everyone else. You know, well, I don't really, I can't really believe everything they say anymore. You know, just because they tell me this and tell me not to do this, well, how much weight does that hold after so many lives? Not to get too far off the subject. In the same sense, there's not really any place where you can go and not look over your shoulder and maybe, if it's even this much, you can feel a little free. So if the Black Crows can make an environment and get on the road and people will start to understand and the security guards will quit hassling people, then everyone can let their hair down, do the things that they have to do to make them happy, because I'm there too, you know? I'm spending my day at the gig too. You yeah, know? and you I show have up, fun as much as everybody yeah, you else. you know, it's my release too. That's, that's what I'm sort of trying to get into the mood for all day. And it's just that simple, you know? We have a last caller, Alex is calling from Ottawa. Hello, Alex. Hi. Um, hi, Chris. Hello, Alex, yourself? <laughs> I'm just wondering how you guys feel when you're compared to the Stones and what kind of influence they've had on you and your music. I'm sorry, can you repeat it again? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm just wondering how you guys feel when you're compared to the Stones and uh, what kind of influence have they had on you and your music. The Rolling oh, you Stones? Yeah. Oh, um... Well, the Rolling Stones are like a huge influence, you know? I mean, they're the, so they say, they're the greatest rock and roll band in the world. And I mean, I, I don't know 
necessarily if it was a sound so much as just a sort of stance they took, you know. Uh, to me, Keith Richards was an influence, not because he looked so cool and played so great, but because he made no bones about putting his band and his music before everything else in his life. And he always told the truth. Now, I mean, I, if you're into that, maybe you should listen to Lowell George. And then if you're into that, you'd like Bob Dylan and everyone else. You know what I mean? There's a lot of stuff. It just seemed like they sort of were the epitome of a social sort of stance also, besides just writing great songs, you know. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Uh, Chris, I would love to keep you even longer, but I know you have a plane to catch. I have a plane and to catch. <laughs> Dennis uh, is waiting for you there. I never get to stay anywhere. Oh, that's great. But you're going to be back when you play. Well, you, you just know, told me you were play. taking me away for the weekend and <laughs> I could work on some more of these questions. And know. then I'll give you a full compte rendu of everything. Yeah, right. We a wish. full medical report <laughs> after nice the weekend. Nice to meet you. And, nice uh, to meet you. And thanks for all the phone again. calls. Yeah. And, um, Peace, y'all. See you out there on the road, I guess. Yeah, next time we'll, we, they'll see you, it's going to be on stage. Uh, Chris Robinson was here today, and uh, we're going to see their latest video from their latest album, The Southern Harmony and uh, Musical Companion.